Hey everybody, welcome back to Tech Odyssey. Today I'm here with a full review of the new BlackBerry Motion. Now, uh, you're probably wondering what this is here, and if you've been using BlackBerry before and you're a longtime BlackBerry fan, this is a BlackBerry Z10. It was the introductory device into the BlackBerry 10 OS and our first jump into the world of all touchscreen. You know, there was, of course, there was a storm, but with the new BlackBerry 10 device, it was their first all touchscreen. Enter today, we have the BlackBerry Motion, which just came out not too long ago and is the very first BlackBerry Mobile licensed device that is an all touchscreen. So we got the key one, now we got the Motion. Now, looking back to days of old, if you remember, BlackBerry wasn't always called BlackBerry, the company itself. It was Research in Motion. And being true to the name, while still remaining BlackBerry, the TCL branded BlackBerry Mobile is the Motion and it keeps you in motion, just like the days of old. Now, this was a wonderful device, and I used it for some time. I actually, I was waiting so long for it to come out, I went ahead and got the Galaxy S3, and the day this came out, I ran straight down to T-Mobile, and I said, give me the Z10, because I need my BlackBerry back. Uh, I've been using BlackBerry since 2005, and you know, I can remember back in the day, I mean, it was an iconic symbol, and it's still, to me, it is, a lot of people it is. It's, the, a very endearing quality. It's got a rich user base and people who love them, and I am one of them, which is why I was super happy to be able to get my hands on the motion. Well, BlackBerry 10 was an iteration, it was a change. When we had the original legacy in the OS, you know, 5, 6, six 7, all those good ones, there were always changes. There was the little thumb scroller on the side, which <laughs> I remember seeing articles of people, you know, getting tendonitis in their thumb from scrolling all the time. And we term, we coined the phrase crackberry. Then as we moved forward, we went to the trackball and then we went to the two letters for each key. And I can still remember, I, I thought it was the coolest thing ever whenever I got that holster and I put it on my belt for the first time and I had my blackberry. And then things changed and we got the bold and we got the little trackball with the pearl and the bold series. And then we moved into this brave new world of a all swipe gesture based OS. And to me, I would still be using it if it were a viable option for me, but it's not. Uh, you know, a lot of things have died and decayed. It's pretty much in standby mode. They're not going to do anything with it anymore. So what is the logical movement forward? Well, the next iteration, enter stage right, is Android. So we've had hardware progressions, we have OS progressions, and now we have the super fancy Android. So not that this wasn't a wonderful part of our BlackBerry journey, but now this is where we're at today in this beautiful piece of hardware called the BlackBerry Motion. Now we've got the carbon fiber on the back just like the Z30 and the Q10 had, Q10. Uh, you can see the camera there. And then, of course, we've got our fancy convenience key, which I love. And then the front-mounted fingerprint sensor, which is the way that I like to have them on my phone. So let's give you a little bit of a rundown of the specs. So I've already done the unboxing video. We've got the phone out. Let's talk about it a little bit. So it's got IP67 water and dust resistance, which is good, up to three feet of water for 30 minutes, which is fantastic. And you can't get that with the keyboard. Um, as much as the keyboard is really a staple, of what BlackBerry has been, and I love the keyboard, uh, especially the BlackBerry ones, you can't beat them, they type so fast. If you wanna see, go back to my typing test video uh, for the BlackBerry Key One when it came out. But they've also, in my opinion, had the best uh, software keyboard in the business. And I don't talk about it a lot because usually I'm using Gboard because that's what I can get on the other phones. If you want the same BlackBerry 10 typing experience, you gotta get a BlackBerry Android phone. and. You get that with this, and it's super fancy. I can type really fast on it, and it is my favorite of all software keyboards. I'll keep going. So you get the 5.5-inch Full HD display, 1080 by uh, 1920 by 1080 resolution. Uh, it's got a premium anti-scratch screen, which I will say it seems pretty on par with Gorilla Glass 5, but it's not. Uh, it's a, I can't remember exactly what it's called. It's a Dragon Trail, I believe, Dragon Patrol Glass. And it's actually, it's really good. Uh, so you've got the OxCore processor, 64-bit, Snapdragon 625, which is the same hardware that you've got inside the BlackBerry Key 1. But they did change things and bump it up a notch, and they gave us four gigs of RAM. 
And that was a point of contention I had with the original BlackBerry Key One was it only had three gigs on launch. With all the stuff that BlackBerry likes to run in their OS and their overlay stuff, you need the extra gig of RAM. You, you just have to have it. So I was glad later on they addressed that. The newer ones, they made them with four gigs, but it needed it from the get-go. So as far as cameras, you've got a 12 megapixel uh, primary shooter with dual tone flash. It's not the same uh, pixel sensor that the Key One had, but the interface is still quick. It takes pretty good pictures. It's just not, it's not 100% the way that the Pixel was. But I mean, the Pixel, the DxO score, it, it, it was the best camera of the generation. This one, they changed it up a little bit, but it's still good. So you got a 4,000 milliamp battery, which just blows the competition out of the water. I was able to get two days of use out of this phone uh, the other day. Took it to work with me. Uh, I wasn't able to use it as much as I would normally, but I was like, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and not charge it tonight and see if I can get through the next day. And I was. Uh, and routinely, I, I have still 50% of the battery left over when I get done at the day, end of the day. Um, other couple of things on here. It's running Android 7.1 Nougat. It's got the latest security update. Uh, I believe for February already and that's another nice thing is they're quick to the turnarounds on uh, software updates latest security stuff patches if you like that stuff stick with BlackBerry because BlackBerry synonymous with security and that's one of the big selling points that they've always had so if you want a secure phone you want the DTEK security software suite this is your guy all right so let's take a look at the phone so we're gonna look kind of at the outside a little bit and I really like a lot of the things they did with this phone um, of course you know the Z30 was the first phablet you know, it was a big deal uh, with BlackBerry 10 that when they bumped up to five inches and this one they bumped up to five and a half or 5.5 inches and it, it's got a really nice feel to it uh, one curious thing I don't really the top is rounded and the, the bottom is kind of squared off I wish it was like that on the top because sometimes when I'm holding it it kind of shifts out of place a little bit but it's not bad it's Nothing overly concerning, but I would have liked uniformity across. So I'll show you how quick the fingerprint sensor is. It's pretty darn fast. I'd say it's on par with the thumbprint fingerprint sensor that the Key One has, but it works really well. And then of course we've got the brushed aluminum look finish. It's premium metal housing design. It's got a nice weight to it. It's got a really nice feel. Um, you know, the iPhone, 7 plus and the 8 plus have a 5.5 inch screen but it's bulky it's heavy it's gigantic this just feels right it, it's it's got a really nice blend and, and i do like it a lot you got dedicated capacitive buttons down at the bottom so you get your back and you got your your menu which when they're not in use they kind of fade away which is cool i like it i like that a lot it's a good feature and some people are like oh, it's got a big chin on it but i really like that um, I'm not cool about this. Let me swipe up all the time to get to the back button, the home button, um, little dots or little things they do to minimize it. I'm okay with bezels, but they need to have a purpose. And I feel like that with the motion, they got the balance just right. There's a little bit up here for the speaker, you know, for the headset and headset speaker and the camera. And then down at the bottom, you get your buttons and your fingerprint sensor, which is, I think a good touch. I like it a lot. So, Getting into the software, you get your launch assistant, which you swipe over to the right, and it's not the actual hub. I'll show you the hub in a minute, but this is just for quick launch. You can get your camera, a link to the hub, and then your notes and reminders, and then your contacts. So you can see all those things, well, recent calls and stuff. And then tasks, stuff for the day, I don't have anything going on in my hub right now because I haven't gotten any messages yet since I started the video. And then, of course, my calendar is free, but the whole balloon thing looks pretty cool. And then, of course, you get your date and your time up there. And you can change it up. One cool thing is you can move it from the left or the right side, which I like. You can change the position. You can change the height. You can change the transparency. So you get the background go along with it, which is cool. Um, see, you can stretch it out a little, just a little tab or a much larger tab. And then with the position, you can move it all around. It's kind of like a little ping pong game. But I like it right about there. It works pretty good for me. And then content settings, you can reorder the tabs. You can choose the tabs for your BlackBerry productivity tab, um, which is what this is called. And you can put the different stuff in there that you want. Also set the permissions. So one other cool thing, you can switch it from the left to the right. 
So if you like it on one side, move to that side. If you like it on the other side, move to that side. It's almost completely customizable, and that's one really good thing. You know, whenever the Priv came out, I was super excited about the Priv because it was a slider. I hadn't had the slider since I think it was the Storm. You could sw slide it up. You could get to the physical keyboard, or you could also use it as a full touch screen. And it was kind of like a hybrid for everybody. It was like, you know what, we're going to make everybody happy. But even myself, it wasn't a true touch screen. It wasn't really... I don't think that great of a slider. I mean, it was a great device that BlackBerry made at the time, but it's evident that they were able, what you could do with two, you could do even better. What well, with one, you could do even better with two, which is why it was great whenever BlackBerry Mobile came out with the key one and now the motion. So taking a look at the hub. Now the hub to me was almost an atrocity trying to run it uh, on the priv. I, I tried using it for like two days because I love the Priv so much and I love the hub so much. So if you want to see a little bit of how good they did with the hub, so we'll go again here. All right, so we got the hub on BlackBerry 10. And as you can see on this little 4.2 inch screen, it's kind of condensed. Now let's take a look at the hub on Android 7.1. So click on the hub right there and look at that. You can see everything. And you still get the swipe where you can move it over and you can pick the stuff that you want and see how quickly it runs. You're not losing, you're not losing anything. And that was one of my major concerns because moving over to Android, I was like, I don't want to lose the hub. It's one of the things that I love, but they just didn't do it right with Android 6.0 on the priv. So I was super excited. Once I got this, I was like, oh my gosh, the hub works. So now that we're in the hub, you can pick the different stuff you want. You can go to your accounts, BBM, text messages, call logs, Facebook. It even has app implementation. So where you're missing out, where all the apps are shutting down with BlackBerry 10, not all of them, it's just a, you know an expression, but many of them are not no longer supported. WhatsApp just went away. Uh, Skype went away. It, a lot of things, are, uh, features that we like on here are dying. So what you have with, um, with Android is you get all that cool app support and you can even get watches for it, which is cool. And that was one of the big hangups I have with 10. So now that we're here, we see how well it works. And then you can even go in and customize it some more. You can customize your alerts, general settings, all that stuff. And of course you get the red dot and I missed the red dot because I like knowing when I have all my stuff I like being able to change the colors and all those cool things. So the hub, is intact, it works, and I'd arguably say it's better than ever because it runs fast and I get my full implementation for the stuff that I want. So all in all, you get all the BlackBerry Suite stuff. So you can go over here, you can add note, uh, task, contact, all the cool stuff that you could do with BlackBerry 10, but you got it here on Android. And of course, the alarm is still, still there and alive and well. Now, if only we could get them to move the, uh, the Porsche uh, clock over, that would be great because I love my Porsche, Porsche Blackberries. So maybe one day I'll cross my fingers and hope that one day we'll see it in the future. Uh, you get your Google search bar right there, uh, which is perfectly, perfectly good and all right. Um, I'm a big fan of it. I use it. And then take a look at the app drawer. I'm hoping once we will we'll be able to get into Oreo soon. Because I've gotten really used to being just able to swipe up to get to my to get to my uh, my apps, but we're not there yet. But they promise it's coming, so I'm hoping we'll get it soon. So swipe from the bottom, you get the quick setting menu, all that cool stuff, and then we'll go into DTEC and show you real quick. So as a review device, I haven't set this one up yet. I'll let you look at it. All right, remote management, sure. All right, so right now I'm at FAIR. This is one of those things that you can see that allows you to kind of change your ways and adjust the flow of how you work with the phone to make it more or less secure. The more things you have with permissions allowed, the more third-party apps you have, things like that, it's gonna bog it down. But it tells you the check marks for the things you're doing good. And then of course you get the X's for the things that you're doing bad. So factory reset protection, I don't have that on there. Remote management. Uh, DTEC needs access to your contacts to evaluate this feature. 
But then I get the green ones for screen lock, for my password, device hardware, developer options, all that good stuff. I don't have that turned on. So we could bump that up. And you go in here to settings and you can look at some of the other stuff. So it does notifications, event logging, and all that jazz. So we're into February now. It's still got the January security patch update. I'm hoping that it'll be available soon. But it's not there yet. But it's running 7.1.2. And the last thing I want to show you is the camera. So on the camera, you can look here and you can see you get the different aspect ratio. You can do 4 by 3, 16 by 9, or 1 to 1 aspect ratio. HDR is set to auto. You can turn it on. You can set it on the manual. Auto is generally a good way to go unless you're just a fancy shooter like I am. Oh, not like I am. I'm not a fancy shooter. I like a camera that I can just pick it up, press the shutter button, and it takes pictures. And there we go. I've taken a lot of pictures of that plant down there. But I think the biggest selling feature on the camera is not so much the processor, not so much the low-level stuff. What you want in a BlackBerry is you want a productivity device, but it does everything. And I think they, they've got a really good blend between the processor, which is highly efficient, especially on battery life, multitasking. It's a multitasking beast. You can switch back and forth between apps. And you can do several things at once. Straight line speed, it's just not there. And you really, if you want straight line speed, you need an 800 series, uh, you know, 821, 835 Snapdragon. Uh, the rumor is the next BlackBerry will hopefully have a 630 or 635, which I'm anxious to see. But the 625 is very good. So you can turn the flash on, off, you can put it on auto. You can set a timer for how long you want it so you can take the picture. You can change different modes here so you can take the different kind of pictures you want and it kind of changes the tone and the way that it takes the picture. Go into settings, you can do control mode, you can change stuff on photos so you get the quality, you get finer standard to enhance the photo uh, clarity. Face detection, which is nice, especially when you're taking pictures, especially, you know, group photos, selfies, things like that. Uh, video, you get the full 1080p at 30 frames per second, and you can save, you can put your geolocation, save to media card, all that good stuff, and use the volume key to take a picture. One other cool thing is there is a secure photo folder on here. So if you don't want your photo going into your photo gallery for the world to see, it has a, it has a, Secure a photo folder set up that you access with the same pen that you do with the phone. And the way that it works is you go ahead and take a picture. Now, if you use the regular shutter, it just goes into the photo library. But if you, if you, oops, if you just touch on the fingerprint sensor, you can see it's got the little security, the locked icon there. To view this file, tap the lock icon or use fingerprint. So you can tap this and you can put in your pin, which as a review device, I just use my generic one, but that's how you look at it in the secure folder. So pretty cool feature there and you can differentiate where you want it to go. Anyway, that's about all I have for the BlackBerry Motion. All in all, I love it. I'm super happy with it. I had some hangups with the Key One. As much as I love the physical keyboard, the flow with the screen just wasn't natural to me. And I think they got the placement a little bit better uh, the convenience key, which I have set up for Slack, I use that for all my group stuff uh, and for mobile nations and for talking and stuff, so I use that a lot. But you can see how quickly the convenience key works. Works really quick, and you can set it to any app, which is really nice, and that's something you're not going to get with uh, other Android devices. So I really feel like they took a lot of the successes of the Key 1, and then they gave us the 5.5-inch screen that we wanted, the All Slab. Oh, you know what? Let me show you the keyboard. So we'll just send it to send it to my other phone. All right, so we get the BlackBerry keyboard. And this is the same as it carried over from the Priv. And of course, it's just the natural BlackBerry 10. So you see it types pretty quick. And then you get the gesture. And you can press here for the predictability. Or it also shows We'll type the word amazing. So you get amazing there, but you can also swipe up and it tries to guess. It throws out the different suggestions out there and you just swipe up, which is another unique feature to the BlackBerry 10 or the BlackBerry Android keyboard. And then 
you just swipe back to erase. So no sitting there tapping away at the back button. All the wonderful features, but it's spread out over a 5.5 inch screen and I would argue is the best soft keyboard on the market. And definitely I think it's the best BlackBerry uh, touch keyboard ever made. So that's all I got guys. Uh, you can pick this up for 450 bucks. Uh, you can check them out on uh, Amazon.com. You can pick them up through Best Buy, B&H, a couple other places. It's great. I love it. And I hope that you like it. Um, you know, it's a bit of a transition, especially if you're moving over from BlackBerry 10 and you're still hanging on and you're using a Z30, you're using a Z10, you're using a Classic, or even a Passport. This is a great logical evolution and the next step. And hopefully, you know, I've been sold on it and hopefully you'll be sold on it as well. But feel free to chime in, uh, ask questions. Uh, I've used both of them extensively, so I can talk to you about the nuances and the cool things like that. So BlackBerry Motion, BlackBerry, here to stay. And I'm glad that we're able to get this new iteration of Android devices. It's finally got it right. You know, it's not, um, not like the DTEK 50 and the 60. This is a 100% invested all-in experience on the Android BlackBerry.